But uh, the book of 2 Samuel 24, beginning at verse 18. And Gad came that day to David and said unto him, Go up, rear an altar unto the Lord in the threshing floor, Aaron, the Jebusite. And David, according to the saying of God, went up as the Lord commanded. Aaron looked and saw the king and his servants come on towards him. And Aaron went out and bowed himself before the king on his face upon the ground. Aaron said, Wherefore is my lord the king come to his servant? And David said, To buy the threshing floor of thee, to build an altar unto the Lord, that the plague may be stayed from the people. Aaron said unto David, Let my lord the king take and offer up what seemeth good unto him. Behold, here is oxen for the burnt sacrifice, threshing instruments and other instruments of oxen for wood. All these things Aaron as a king gave unto, as a king give unto the king. And Aaron said unto the king, The Lord thy God has set thee. And the king said unto Aaron, Nay, but I will surely buy it of thee at a price. Neither will I offer burnt offerings unto the Lord my God of that which doth cost me nothing. So David bought the threshing floor floor and the oxen for fifty shekels of silver. And David built there an altar unto the Lord and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings. So the Lord was entreated for the land and the plague was stayed from Israel. You may be seated. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your love and mercy. We thank you, Lord, for your great grace. Thank you, Lord, for a beautiful day. Lord, we thank you for your beautiful scripture, God, and songs. And God, we thank you and we can come together to learn more about you and talk about your goodness. And Lord, to understand your word so that we may gain strength and knowledge. We pray for God, those that have lost interest in your house. Lord, we pray for those that no longer go on Sunday morning or Sunday night or through the week. and Lord, they replace you with something. Yeah. I'm talking about those that go and can go. Lord, they've replaced you with something. And Lord, there's nothing. If we gain the whole world mm -hmm. and lose our own soul, what does it profit? So we thank you. So apply the message to our hearts. And we pray, God, that his zeal may be renewed. Lord, that we'll never you lose our excitement, though, either way, as I preach quite often. I'm going to stay excited about Jesus. You still save me. You still bless me. You still help me. You still give me peace and comfort. You give me instructions and helps in all things, understandings. So we thank you. Mm -hmm. So anoint physically, God, we may preach the Word of God in the strength of the flesh, but above all, nor spiritually may preach thy word in the power of the Spirit. Lord God, that we, and tied together the loose end, fill the void we leave because of our inability, let thy word go out freely. thy name we pray, amen, amen. Amen. <clears throat> out of this verse 24, the only time this well is uh, a recount of it in First Chronicles. But in verse 24, I... I don't know if you ever caught that. Yeah, I have. I never. I haven't preached on it just out of this. But uh, catch what it said there. Now, first of all, understand what has happened. David had numbered the people. God is unsatisfied, dissatisfied with Israel. Again, Israel was always failing to stand up to the blessings and stand up to God and for God. Remind you of the United States, doesn't it? Sure does. But Israel was constantly failing. And they, and they would have good kings and bad kings. Uh, Israel, well, uh, from the time they split up to Solomon, uh, after they split to the ten tribes, northern tribe, uh, sometimes called Israel, sometimes uh, called Ephraim, uh, when they split, they never had a godly king after that. 
but this is before that split, but there's still uh, uh, times they would go against God. All through the wilderness, remember, it, it continued from day one. Mm -hmm. And we still see it today. We see people and nations still forget God. Uh, Moses warned me, he said, now, when you get over into the land, and you go to places and you uh, eat vineyard, that's what you're not planted, your house you're not built. He said, don't forget me. When things go good, don't forget me. Hey, I, I, one of the worst times to forget God, and it seems on opposite end that people still forget God. When things are really good, they kind of forget God because they don't need Him. Yeah. Thank you, Dad. And to say it that way, they don't mm -hmm. need Him. They got the money to pay the bills. They got food. They're medically okay. They don't really need God. They got a job. A, a, a sinners live all the time without God. They still grow gardens. A, a lot of the gardens you see up and down Elk River Road this year or, or whatever, or, or the farmers of the America, they're not all Christians that have good gardens. A, a God will bring a, rain and sunshine on the just the unjust, good and evil. A, 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 the people... I will tend to forget God when things are doing good, doing good. And sometimes Christians, when things go bad, forget God. True. Blame me. They forget God. Mm -hmm. They get discouraged, disappointed, and disillusioned, and all the other things. And they stay home from the house of God. They forget God. Wow. What a time you shouldn't forget God of all times. Especially in those times. That's like saying uh, that uh, once you... Uh, I get sick, you you do away with all doctors. <laughs> Once I get sick, I'm not going to ever use a doctor again. I'm not going to take any medicine. Once I get sick, I'm only going to use doctors and medicine when I don't have a problem. <laughs> don't make a lot of sense, does it? Well, that's what we do with God. Mm -hmm. It's the same comparison. Uh, amen. Uh, so I need God. So uh, I in mean, verse 16, David had numbered the people. Uh, and the, the problem was uh, that uh, they had depended on numbers uh, more than God. Uh, in this case, uh, it's kind of an odd thing, and we won't get into all that. But God is still a plague, uh, and David had three choices. Uh, hey, you talk about being between a, a rock and a hard place. <laughs> Yeah. Or jumping out of the frying pan to the fire and all those other mm -hmm. issues. Three choices. So David thought maybe God will be merciful. I'll let fall in the hands of God. So in verse 16, when the angels stretched out his hand upon Jerusalem to destroy it. Well, go to verse 15. Mm -hmm. So the Lord sent a pestilence over Israel from the morning even to the time appointed. There died of the people from Dan in the Bersheba 70,000 men. Mm. And when the angels stretched their hand upon Jerusalem to destroy it, the Lord repented him of the evil and said to the angel, Destroy the people it is enough. Stay now in thy hand. The angel of the Lord was by the threshing place, Aaron, uh, the Egyptian, like so. We see what's going on. So now David makes a sacrifice. What would preach on? He said, I offer burnt offering unto the Lord my God, a wish does not cost me nothing. I'm not going to offer something that costs me nothing. Hmm. I'm not going to offer something that costs me nothing. Amen. So we see that what I, I, I want to I preach on is sacrifice is not free. Sacrifice is not free. And uh, we won't go in real depths of it. But the Bible said, Give, and it shall be given unto you. See, the economics of God are not like the economics of man. That economics of man, that if you save all you can, or you take all you can, and you give away the least amount you can, therefore uh, you store up more. God, the economics said, You give. You give and you give and it shall be given to you. Good measure pressed down. I shake them together and running over. So we see this. So the economics of God is direct opposite. That's why a lot of people seem to have trouble. Amen. Live for God. They try to live a fleshly way in a spiritual realm. But sacrifice is not free. You give. Mm -hmm. Blessings are not free. 
you got to sacrifice to receive the blessings of God. Amen. Hey, I, I love it, gentlemen. I thought Ron he, he said this about a person came, and I've heard the same very similar testimony. Uh, and then uh, the somebody stand up and say, Well, I tried to go to John's house. Uh, I, I seen him, and he wasn't home. And I was going by the grass, but it was a little bit too wet. And I went over to Harry's house and uh, go and talk to him, but uh, he, he was getting ready to go somewhere so I just went ahead and came to church <laughs> so uh, Ron talked about it. I've heard the I decided to come to church I really have. I'm glad they're there but I'm not impressed with the desire I'm glad they're there but I'm not impressed with the desire, it was the last joy. I came because there's nothing else to do. It's the same way when you give me something uh, and you tell me, uh, Clarence, I, I'll give you this uh, hot dogs or, or flitters. Uh, and I was getting ready to throw them out to the dog, but my husband said, Clarence may want those. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I feel really blessed. <laughs> I feel really special. <laughs> So that's kind of how God feels. I didn't have anywhere else to go. Everywhere I tried to go, I couldn't go. So I decided to come to church. Mm. I decided to wow. come to church. Hey, sacrifice is not free. Amen. I want to give God my best. It's not free when you give God the best of your sheep, the best of your fruit, the best of your life, the best of your service. Amen. The best of your day. And we need to give God our best. So David had numbered the people. Hey, and it's bad when we put our faith in other things besides our faith in Jesus Christ. Our faith is not in numbers. And God has never allowed me to deal on numbers, dwell on numbers. Yes, Lord. Same deal to you that I never dwelt on numbers. I never dwelt on numbers because I always took this thing serious from the last 50, 45 years. The Lord showed that and I've always took that. I'm not anybody keeps record uh, uh, of how many was saved or they came. Anybody does that's up to them. That one uh, one hundred percent up to them, uh, amen. Uh, but I don't. I, I want to see a church increase. But I want to increase in love uh, and mercy above everything else. Uh, numbers are great, uh, but I won't do things just to add numbers, uh, amen. Uh, I just won't. I feel like I'm break for me. I'm talking about me now. I feel like I'm breaking uh, and doing what David did that was wrong, uh, that God wasn't well pleased with. Uh, but I do want to do what David did. Uh, Amen. It's a great principle to live by. And he did the same thing as recorded in 1 Chronicles 21. And it says in there, he said, and, uh, and King David said in Orna, the name is also Orna, now here he's buying the whole uh, property, not just a threshing floor. Nay, but I will very buy it for the full price. For I will not take that which is thine for the Lord, nor burnt offerings uh, without cause. Uh, hey, I don't mind paying the cause uh, uh, to serve God. Uh, I don't mind paying the cause uh, uh, to give up the evening. Uh, amen. And uh, uh, at home, uh, or give up the evening doing something else uh, hey, to serve God. Uh, I'm willing to sacrifice. Uh, I get the blessing of God. Uh, I don't want to give a sacrifice. Uh, uh, it, it became that way in, in, day, in Christ's time. Uh, the temple saw all kinds of sacrifices uh, and it wasn't that they were bad or good uh, that's not the main point uh, uh, Jesus become our pledge a uh, uh, sacrifice you could come in you didn't have to worry about you didn't have to uh, uh, take care of an animal uh, you didn't have to take on your flock you just showed up in Jerusalem uh, you pay a certain price uh, and you can have a lamb sacrifice uh, that didn't impress God no no it didn't cost them the best of their flock. It didn't cost them time. It didn't cost them time and effort to raise something special for God. 
-hmm. Raise something special for God. Amen. So I want to always... In Matthew 4 uh, and 20, when he called the disciples, uh, uh, Peter then was fishing. Uh, he said, come on, uh, I'll make you fishers of men. Uh, they left their nets. Uh, there's things we need to leave. Uh, if yeah. we're going to live in God's blessing, we have to leave yep. something behind. Uh, every time Abraham uh, moved up to another province, uh, he left something behind. So I'm not a preacher to tell you all, uh, get saved, you don't have to give up anything. If you want to live in the blessings of God, you give up something. Sure you do. But I guarantee you, you can't outgive God. Guarantee you, you can't outgive God. Okay. One more scripture, we're going to close. Book of Psalms uh, 50. And I think the main thing here in 50, we're talking about, you know, how am I going to impress God or, or buy the affection of God or or keep God dependent upon me. I'm a God gonna be hard to replace me. He's gonna to have to depend on me. <laughs> yeah. I think who the people think they are that God <laughs> can't raise up another. But hear what God says in Psalm fifty. He said, I will take no bullock out of thy house, mm -hmm. in verse nine, nor he goats out of thy folds. For every beast of the forest is mine, and a cattle upon a thousand hills. Mm -hmm. If I were hungry, I know all the fowls of the mountains, and the wild beasts of the field, they're mine. Mm -hmm. If I were hungry, I wouldn't tell you. <laughs> For the world is mine, and the fullness mm -hmm. thereof. <clears throat> Will I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats? God said, Hey, I own it all. I own it all. Amen. I own it all. <coughs> but I'm willing right. to sacrifice. Mm -hmm. I don't consider living for God just a free ride. Yeah. No, it's a free now. It's a joyful ride. You can't outgive it. Right. But to receive, you got to give. Okay. Amen. To receive, you got to to be blessed in His Word. You got to put some effort into it, mm -hmm. either by listening to uh, teaching or by reading yourself. Or by uh, reading other uh, helps and things, there's effort put into it. David said, I won't take that free. I won't give a sacrifice that costs me nothing. Amen. I don't want to be blessed by God that costs me nothing. Yeah. Let us pray. Listen. Lord, we thank you and we love you. <clears throat> pray God you may take these words and apply them to our hearts that we may always bring glory to thy name. Lord, that we're always willing. Uh, to give ourselves the things that you require. And for some, you require what seems like more than others. Some God, that uh, it seems like amazing what they gave. And Lord, some, it seems amazing of what you've done for them. And we thank you, Lord, for your big book. And we thank you, Lord, for your wonderful promises. In thy name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.